Good evening and welcome to DC Today Prime. I'm Del Walters. When does taking a knee become a political knife that cuts both ways? We'll talk about the Black Lives Matter movement with a conservative member of the clergy. But first, the latest. Joining us now from Washington, D.C. is the Reverend Derek McCoy. He is with the Conservative Clergy of Color. Reverend McCoy, thanks for being with us. Um, your thoughts on the fact that this San Francisco Giants baseball player decided not to take a knee? You know what? I think it's, uh, uh, it's actually a good thing. Um, well, uh, l let, me, let me restate this real quick. As I think about this, um, we live in America where a lot of people have freedom to do what they want to do. I think we still go back to the baseline point that we, if we understand, you know, whether taking a knee or not taking a knee, if we're going to go back to this whole issue, uh, there is a innate desire to make sure that we respect our country, respect our flag, respect our history, respect a lot of things around a great country that we live in called America. Now, when people decide not to take knees, um, it is their free will, and that's the one thing I love about being in America. We get the opportunity to choose. Uh, at the same time, I would suggest and I would just make sure that we understand that it's not the best thing uh, to model. And I, I think any, any baseball player, any sports league player, uh, they need to understand their real critical role as, mo as, ro uh, their role, as role models and as leaders in society. And, uh, you know, they get the opportunity to do – an incredible job playing sports and for a life and, a, and for a lifestyle and for a career in America. And so when you start beginning the point of saying, I don't want, I'm going to disrespect the country. I'm not going to disrespect the country. I think that's a big deal. And so I think I would encourage them, uh, you know, make sure that we're respecting the country through this process. Why is taking a knee basically trying to point out the fact that as a black man, you don't want to be killed by police disrespecting the country? You know what? It, it, it's, it's a point, you think about it this way. Um, we've turned in the ability to sing our national anthem and give respect to the flag and give respect to our country. And we've turned this now into a political statement, whether we're going to be black or white or whatever we're going to do to say, you know, in, in regards to um, this issue about the police, this issue about protest, this issue about who we are as black people. I, I'm a hey, look, I'm a black person. I got a black card at the same time. I've served in the military and I respect the country that I live in. And I understand I've been overseas out of this country. The freedoms and the ability that we have based on our constitution in this country is one of the best in the world. And so people need to understand that oftentimes people that never served this country before and fought for it don't understand that level of respect. And so while I do, my sister is also a colonel in the United States Army. Uh, there's just an innate respect and we are black. So are you saying that the country that you fought for, the freedom of speech, the freedom to be able to express yourself by taking a knee, are you saying that you support the San Francisco Giant player who didn't take a knee but not Colin Kaepernick, the others and the other members of the NFL and now Major League Baseball and the WNBA and National Hockey Association? 
which ones do you support? Which freedom of speech do you support? <laughs> uh, great question. I don't look at it as necessarily subjective. Here, here's my thing. I don't think we should turn it into a political football. I don't think we should, we should be turning a, a great opportunity where we're giving respect and honor to the flag at a sports game into a point where we're saying, let's make our biggest political statement right here, right now. Yeah, why not take that, that moment? I mean, you have the national spotlight. You are standing there, and it, it, obviously sometimes people just get to the point where they have to make a statement. Why not use that moment where, as an athlete, you have the eyes of the nation and the world on you to say that, I think what's happening to black Americans is wrong? Well, good point. At the same time, as I just heard Doc Rivers talk about not too long ago, these players and even playing in this next NBA series that they're putting on now is an opportunity to give them voice. These players, if they want to have a voice, be a Ben Watson, have a voice, write a book, write an op-ed, do a political piece, do something where you're speaking to the culture, the country, in a moment where you can. I think when we take our little moments where we're giving honor to something already there. So it, 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 think about it this way, when we're saluting the flag or when we're giving you know, homage to America and we're taking that moment and then turning it into what we would call a, a black moment or a white moment. I say, you know, I think that's where we're just illegitimately using times and, and, and taking things from a political space and moving it over. I think we gotta be honest and sincere about our country, where we live and where we are. We do have those freedoms as you just mentioned. And, and that's what I stand for. I think there are so many opportunities for professional athletes to take a stand, to voice their opinion, and to be out there. Why does it have to be right in these moments where we're also honoring our country? Because it's a controversial moment. And I think in this controversial moment, that's not the place to do it. So uh, do you think that Drew Brees, for instance, who has had an about face on this was wrong to have an about face? You know what? I think a lot of people sensitize Drew Brees because he made his opinion known real quickly. I don't think he was wrong because I think it's about having information and understanding and perspective. Uh, you know, what's lacking a lot in society today is a little bit of grace, meaning grace to help people. Once they get new information, they get knowledge, they can turn and they can change. Uh, that's for my black brothers and sisters. That's for my white brothers and sisters, my Latino and everybody else in between. Because one of the things that we have to understand is that um, you know, in the, in the case of a Drew Brees, yeah, he made a pretty dogmatic statement up front. Um, but maybe it needed to be sensitized with some perspective and understanding that I think several teammates and other players gave him real quickly. Um, so for him to turn around, no, I don't think it's bad for him to turn around. But in, in, in the thing is, he's going to have to parse through what he really believes in his statement and what he doesn't. What is politically expedient? Because we know we're living in a time where people like to shut down people's voices, period, because it's not, quote, unquote, politically correct. I think we're losing our voice in terms of debate and real conversation and discussion, and that's a real problem in, the, in our country, in America. So that's why I would say, and it sounds may sound a little bit ambivalent, but I'm real clear, uh, where you can have the opportunity, because you live in America, to take a knee or not take a knee, where you can have an opportunity to, to reverse your opinion or not reverse your opinion. At the same time, let's think about where we live. And even in that knee situation, let's not turn a moment where we're supposed to give honor and respect to a country that we all live in because we all practice certain freedoms here and then flip it for our own political gain. I think that's wrong. Reverend McCoy, we're going to take a break. When we come back, our conversation continues. Stay with us.